motion graphics. I just love them. And that is why I force you now to go together with me over the whole process of creating this and as promised without any third party plugins. But as we are not using them, I will make a huge giveaway today of some really, really cool plugins. Actually worth, let me check. 8,412 bucks. Not bad. So, one of you lucky ones watching will win all of this. It's a tool that does everything. So, stick around till the end where I'm going to show you an inside of this cool tool and also tell you how you can win it. But what will we learn today? First, we create a text. We will animate it in a really cool, random way. After that, we will make it 3D add a background and lights and finally add some reflections. And once done, we are going to create the most important and most impressive part, the interactive volumetric lights, all within After Effects with no plugins from scratch. So we create a new composition, 1920 by 1080, which is full HD. And I'm also going to create a new layer and call this our background for now. And of course, we need a text. So. I am creating a new text and type in motion graphics, please. Take your time for that. Try to play with the text settings over here. You can define stuff like the space between the letters, which is called tracking, as well as the position and size of each character. So you get from something like this with a few minutes of extra work to something like this. Worth it. But Let's keep it simple for today. No distraction, please. So let's turn this text into a 3D by clicking the 3D switch. Now we can click next to the text here on animate and we turn on per character. Because in my opinion, it looks way better if the characters animate independently. And I want my animation to last like four seconds. So I set the keyframe for the position here Go to the first frame and adjust the depth position, the Z position, until the text is out of frame. Well, so far, so good. Now let's randomize this. Remember when we are talked about the tracking, not motion tracking, but the distance between the characters, let's animate that. But hey, there is nothing to keyframe here. Hmm. Well, there is, it's just hidden. Again, go to animate and here you'll find it. And now you have something to keyframe and breathe out, breathe in and focus on that because that will be our workflow for today. If we want to animate something today, we add that as an animator and work with that. Why? Because its default is whatever we have said before. So you can animate it in and it will always end on your created look. I love this. Okay, cool, but still not very cool. I want this to be more random. So let's do this. As mentioned, in the same way we created the tracking, we can now create new transform options. For example, we add the position animator. And here you can set the Z position, but you also have a slider from zero to 100%. And this is how it affects the text. So zero being the start, so the first letter, and 100 is the last one. That means now you can have them fly in one by one. And that is exactly almost what we want. Works for all properties here. So you can add whatever you want, set your value, and then animate the range. But it's still very clean. And to change that, we can go into the advanced tab and turn on randomize order and voila each character animates in with its own random order so i do with the same with some more properties quick tip here you can add a property and that will react to the same range slider meaning if it does for example the set depth position it also rotates and if you want this to be even more random you can simply create an animator per each property and not more properties on one animator. So you have a range slider for every setting individually. And while we're at this, let's also name it tracking 
position and this one rotation. Now some characters move while others rotate and hey, all of them do the tracking. So the animation is locked. Now we can jump to the fun part, making this 3D. I am creating a camera first, so I see all of this in context already. And I will go extra wide with the lens, almost like a fisheye lens. So the characters almost bend to the side and the depth is even more enhanced. Let's now actually start with our background. I make this layer 3D. Hey, and wouldn't it be nice if we could curve this so we would have like a wide curved studio wall? Hey, nothing easier than that. In the geometry options down here, you can curve it hey, and also increase the number of segments. And let's also change this to two views so we can see it a little bit better. Now let's rotate the layer. Yeah, great. Now we also open the geometry options for our text. And here we have the bevel options and we can extrude it. So let's start with that as the rest will build upon that. So this basically means how far it goes back into the distance. And at the moment we can't really judge this as everything has the same color. So before we go any further, let's create a light or maybe two. Again, the two views are super handy for that. I create one point light with a bluish color and one a little pinky. And now we start to get a sense of the 3D depth. And also our background starts to look way better. And as we have that, we can now set up our bevel, which is, well, the edge from the front and back of the character to its side. And for this example, I go with convex, but you can choose whatever you want. Bevel depth and whole bevel depth speak for themselves and best is to play with them until you have something you like. And we are getting from kind of okay to okay-ish. So we just keep on improving. At first, let's set up the materials of this text. Here you can, for example, define if the characters are reflecting each other and hell yeah, we want that, but we can't see it. Huh? Because at the moment, the reflection intensity is at zero. So let's bring it up. And now we are talking, but, but wait, let's set it back to zero. Because we can even have more control over it. Because as for all other text properties, we can add properties for the sides, front, back, and the bevel of our text individually, whatever you want to have. Control over color or reflectivity, awesome. With that, we can get each look we want. But why is that so important? We could just color it and we are good to go. Mm, nope, not true. For example, gold. Yes, gold, what is that? A color? Well, no. Gold, silver, well, all shiny metals don't describe a color. Gold is yellow and silver is gray. But once you add reflections to that, they become from yellow to gold and from gray to silver. Or a little easier to understand, reflections make things look cooler. And believe me or not, we can still improve on that. At the moment, all that is reflecting is the letters themselves. But there's no actual environment. So let's start with something easy. I just want some reflections, just something with a contrast so it looks more interesting. So I create a layer, call it environment, and simply add a fractal noise effect to this. But now we still need to tell After Effects that this should be our environment. And that is again, super easy. Just right click on it and choose environment layer. Done. And now you see that we got some really nice reflections in our 3D object. Whew. Okay, now let's define a look. In my example, this is pretty much backlit. So I'll do the same here. Get rid of the lights and only use one that I'm also going to animate from left to right. Perfect. Now let's create the volumetric god rays. So what are they actually? Hmm. If we analyze those, it is the brightest parts of the image that get pushed out from a center point. So basically a directional blur that starts wherever our light is. Okay, let's do this. Let's create a really bright light source. Well, a white circle that is as bright as it gets. Also make it 3D and parent it to the light. And 
in its material setting, let's turn off except lights because it's as bright as it gets anyway. Now it follows the light and we have a hotspot in the middle of our light source. Great. And we want to blur this from its center in each direction. Well, a radial blur is just fine for that. So let's bring out the radial fast blur because this has a special setting for only blurring the brightest parts. <laughs> what a coincidence. So if we add this not on the white circle, but create an adjustment layer itself, it actually picks the bright values from the circle and shines them over the letters. Well, exactly what a volumetric light does. But let's also set its blending mode to add or screen to make this even more realistic. Hey, and now you have two ways to drive this. First, play with the white circle with its transparency or feathering. And second, add a levels effect before the blur, so you can define how much is considered as bright and what will shine and what not. Both will drastically change the overall look. And now, as we have done all of that, we can finally concentrate on the important part. The part why all of you are watching the free giveaway. So I said this is huge. So let me quickly share my screen and I will now show you how I normally work. Not in tutorial mode, but in tutorial creation mode. Because the one big time saver that I use for all of this is the After Effects Juice Package Manager. <sighs> so what is this? Well, this is everything. This is everything. Once opened, here are all packages that you will get and that I normally use. Hey, I need a cool transition. Okay, I click on transition and there are hundreds. And if I like one of those, I click on it and it is applied to my comp at the right timing with a sound effect. Cool, but I want more. I also need a text animation. Okay, here we go. Let's use this package. Choose an animation and the only thing we need to do now is switch out the text, of course. Done. Oh, and there are also sound effects. And what I love about those is that I can hover over those and I directly hear them. No need for any player or the Windows Explorer. You need animated markers or a cool animated logo or just something to spice up your tutorial. Well, Skull works fine all the time. <laughs> and the broken glass or a cool film look. Do you ask for grain? Well, here it is. Explosions, blood, energy. As I said, there's everything within After Effects. You do not have to open a folder once and you have a preview for each asset. But what do you actually have to do to win this? So simply leave me a comment with your all-time favorite visual effects from a movie, from TikTok or Instagram, or from a personal project. And from all comments, I will pick one of you who will get more than, well, more than 10,000 assets from over 65 different packages. Enough for today. I'm really looking forward to your comments. And for now, I wish you a lot of fun with motion graphics in After Effects.